All commercial fishing vessels in the uh, North Atlantic region are required to carry immersion suits for each person on board. Uh, and the immersion suit is probably one of the most important uh, safety devices on board the vessel. Uh, it uh, is going to protect you if you have to go into the water uh, if the vessel sinks. If you go into this water without an immersion suit, uh, you could uh, suffer hypothermia very quickly uh, and uh, die. Uh, even if you are able to deploy your life raft, you may have to go in the water first uh, and then get in the life raft. If you don't have an immersion suit on, you could also suffer hypothermia uh, just getting into the raft. Uh, so this suit is very important uh, to have on board and be maintained. Uh, what we are trying to do with this training uh, during uh, these sessions is to make uh, sure that everybody knows how to properly store and maintain their suits, what size suits uh, are required uh, to fit them, and uh, how to put the suits on. Uh, we show them uh, a video, practical, hands-on uh, demonstrations, and uh, everybody puts the suits on and goes into uh, a saltwater pool. We put about, uh, I understand, about 1,800 people through this uh, training, and uh, uh, this, this training has been uh, valuable in that uh, many fishermen that, that come and bring their own suits, they've discovered the suits do not fit them, uh, the, they've discovered that the suits are defective, uh, been damaged or too old, uh, and so uh, by jumping in the pool or trying to put the, the suit on and going in the pool, uh, they've had a real eye-opener uh, as to uh, uh, what can happen if you don't maintain your suit or have a properly fitting suit. And so as a result, a lot of people have gone out and purchased new suits uh, and uh, and have, uh, went, once they got back aboard their vessels, uh, maintained and drilled with the suits to make sure they know how to properly use them and maintain them. And I can tell a lot of things about this raft by looking on the outside. Right here, it's a Solus APAC. So I know it has food and water, has all the flares, everything that Dave just showed you. Put this up, throw it over the lee side. You want it to blow downwind away from the boat. The boat's gonna roll, could be, uh, a fire, you don't want to go into a hot hull, whatever the reason is that you're uh, abandoning ship. This is called a riding strap. Sometimes it's just a rope. On some of the older rafts, it'll be just a rope with knots. The instructions say climb up on this thing. You're not going to be able to climb up to it in all reality. It's going to be very difficult. You might be able to get your knees on here, though. Grab it, start pulling it, pulling it, lean backwards. It's going to go down in the water a little bit if you can turn it into the wind, turn it into the wind. It's going to come over. Here's the opening, here's the oars, you can see. This raft has an insulated floor. And all this is, as you can see, there's not much to it that makes it insulated. All right, guys, on your boat you're going to find three types of flares. Smoke, handheld, and rocket flares. These here burn three minutes. These are primarily for daytime use. However, if it's nighttime and this is all you've got and you hear a helicopter come and use it because it puts off a heat signature. Coast Guard says if you have equipment, it has to be in proper operating condition. If it's expired and it's in your flare kit, it's not in proper operating condition, what you should do is keep it in a separate kit. Next one we'll talk about are handheld flares. These are day or night. Very efficient. This is a Solus approved flare. And again, they all have expiration dates. Manufactured in 1004, expired in 308. This particular model, we pull it down, turn it, hit the bottom. This type here, if you have these, you see a lot of these around, pull this out, unscrew it, there's a string, hold it in a safe, safely away from everything. The little thing's gonna pop out. So I'm gonna take it. You notice there's sparks and ash, but there's no hot slag, or very little coming off. Actually, what's falling there we saw was this was just paper burning. A little bit brighter than the other one, isn't it? It's also putting a hell of a lot of smoke out, so it's actually serving two purposes. It's putting smoke, and it's putting light. So this is going to get somebody's attention. You want to hold it at a 65 to 85 degree angle. Always point it downwind or across the wind. Never straight up, and never into the wind. Straight up and there's no wind that can come back down on you. 
point it into the wind. It could drift back down on you. So we're going to hold it. We're going to Oh, wow, that's pretty good, huh? Don't go that high. Now we have several different types here. Again, you want to hold it at a 65 to 85 degree angle. This particular type, you pull down, and the trigger mechanism is going to show. This is what's going to come out of these uh, larger rockets. That's what's coming out of there. That's a projectile. It's a little mortar. The way you want to hold it, is like this, 65 to 85 degree angle. Notice how I've got my hand turned backwards. I'm not holding, I hold it like this, too easy to come back. I have more strength holding it like this. Okay. These things are not toys. Yeah. This one here is a little smaller, so I'll show you with this one. Again, 65 to 85 degree angle, downwind, turn your hand. Everybody grab a smoke flare, line up on the pier here. Do you have to do that? Yeah, no, for sure. No, it's over. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Now you want to hold it with your left hand? hand? Yeah. Hold it with your right hand like this. Oh, that's crazy. Alright. Uh, 65 to 85 degree angle. And use your thumb. If you use it to press off the bottom of the angle, it's smooth. If you use it, I'm going to turn this over. So it's almost so smooth. It's just not going to be perfect. Hold it like that, like that, and push up. Turn your face with your palm. Turn your face with your palm. Oh, no, you feel Hey, this one here we got, it's a little different. It's got a cotter pin in it. Somewhere different. This one's got a cotter pin. It's a European model. We don't find a lot of these anymore, but occasionally you will. So, if it's got a cotter pin, don't panic. Just pull it out. And it's going to drop the trigger. This way, yep, like that. You just push it up, push it up, turn your face to the side.